Hi. Today, we're going to go through some of the most popular gacha games on the market and discussing whether I think that they are overrated, underrated, or perfectly rated. And honestly, I'd be really interested in what you guys think about these games because our opinions are gonna differ. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get flamed for my opinion on Genshin Impact, but do remember that this is also about the reputation of the game, not only how good it is. Because while I may think that Raid Shadow Legends is the best gacha game on the market, for example, I may also think that it's actually a little bit underrated because of how little people share the same opinion. And so with that said, I'm going to start off with my beloved game that I've been making content for the last two years, Princess Connect. But before that, I do have a quick word from the sponsor of this video, Tower of God Great Journey. Tower of God Great Journey is an idle RPG based on the hit webtoon, uh, Tower of God. <laughs> the game features a reliving of the story and world with high quality animations with the ability to recruit your favorite characters from the original webtoon, such as Rachel. Because everyone loves Rachel, right? And 25th Night Bam, Kun, Yuri, Huaryun, and more. By clearing various missions and game modes, you can earn massive rewards such as transcending materials, ignition weapons, and even the main characters Bam and Viol from the Revolution Road missions. There is a gear sharing mechanic where all of your characters can equip the same gear at the same time, as well as an AFK style idle level up system where the game will automatically accumulate rewards even if you're offline. Don't miss out on the launch celebrations where you can get 50,000 gold, an epic endorsee, and a 10 Tower of Summon tickets. And so if you are interested in Tower of God Great Journey, then head on down to the description and use my link below. Thank you to Tower of God Great Journey for the sponsorship, and with that, let's get on with the video. Princess Connect Redive, slightly underrated. I personally think that one of the things holding this game back is because of its name, right? Where most games have more neutral sounding names, such as like Ark Knights, you've got Path to Nowhere, you've got Eversoul, you've got Grand Blue Fantasy. The unfortunate truth is that the word princess, as well as all of this pink, it's probably not very appealing to the Western male demographic. Funnily enough, it doesn't stop the JP bros, but like, to be honest, if I saw this on like an Instagram ad or a YouTube ad or something, there is a pretty good chance that I'd be like, is this a dress up game for 13 year old girls? But within the gacha community, I do think that Precon is appropriately rated. It is perfectly rated. I think most gacha gamers have given this game a pretty good shot, and they've pretty much made their mind in terms of, I like this game or I don't. And I do think that the game has been given enough opportunities, especially because it is developed by Psy Games, a publisher that is pretty famous for its free to play games like GBF, Shadowverse, Dragalia Lost, as well as its different VTuber collabs. So for launch, they had Hololive English, and for I think like first year anniversary, they had Niji Sanji EN. Nike, Goddess of Victory, was overrated, now slightly overrated. My guys, I have learned that the majority of gacha gamers think with their PP first, their hearts second, and then third with their heads. And so with great art, big booba, and a lot of ass, this game was hyped to the moon. I do think that the game itself is pretty cool, however, if it didn't have those fan service elements, I really don't think that it would be doing as good as it is doing now. And with the release of the latest revenue numbers for February from 47 million down to 28 million, it seems that a Chainsaw Man collab with a Makima wearing a coat couldn't save its revenue. Although they have recently said that they will remove the coat, so I do expect the revenue to spike again. Just really proves my point, huh? <laughs> Fate Grand Order, I would say it's perfectly rated. The FGO fanbase is very aware of the various flaws of their game, and they quite openly talk about it. I've been trying for years, then I realized I just wanted to be happy. Someone save him from this hell. You have to be prepared for disappointment. The gacha system is very unforgiving. That said though, despite all of its flaws, it is still a favorite gacha game for many people. For the thread, what's everyone's top three gacha games? FGO as the top gacha game. We've got another one over here, top five gacha games. FGO, the older gacha I've sticked with. Scrolling down a little bit more, we've got FGO again, and there are a few more. This is quite common. Although I would say that a lot of this is thanks to the good writing as well as the Fate IP itself. I personally really like the Fate franchise. However, when I look at FGO, I, I'm not really sure that the awesome story can carry it for me. It's kind of like you're tied to a chair and you're just getting whipped. It hurts, but deep inside, you like it a little bit, just a little bit. Regardless, a very toxic relationship, but one that I can appreciate. Don't ask me what that means. Genshin Impact. Perfectly rated, but definitely still kind of overhated. Some of it is just people hating on a popular thing. And then there's the hate from the normies who can't accept the fact that liking anime doesn't make you a sexual predator. Unless you're one of these people. And these people. And these people. <laughs> 
Oh god. However, whether you like it or not, this game is without a doubt one of the most polished on the market with an insane amount of reinvestment, and the fans do feel that. This is one of the very few gacha games that are still growing after launch, so after two and a half years, a lot of the world has given it a good shot and understand where they stand with the game. I don't think I need to say much more about this one. Punishing Grey Raven. Lightly underrated, also slightly overhated. The launch of the game was messy. Back then, it was really, really giga hyped, but because of some of the launch drama, such as the Ember skin, as well as the $1 Discord mod incident, and a bunch of other things, the player base was a little bit split. I think that the game itself, if you're into these action-oriented skill-based games, it's fantastic. It's probably one of the most optimized gacha games I've actually ever played, and the fact that you can actually get enough currency for every single unit to essentially experience the full game, it doesn't really get much better than that. Blue Archive. Slightly underrated, although I would say that nowadays it's pretty close to being perfectly rated. I do think that it used to be quite underrated because it is a fantastic game, however, Ever since the fourth PV hitting 7.9 million views as of today, I think that this has pushed a whole bunch of people to actually just give it a shot and finally decide on whether they like the game or not. I'm personally very happy with it and as you can see, this is one of the very few games that is still experiencing positive growth after launch, but I still think that there is still a little bit more potential for Blue Archive to grow. Tower of Fantasy. Perfectly rated? kind of overhated. This game really exploded on launch, especially because of the reputation of it being potentially a Genshin Impact killer. And so for that reason, I do think that the game has been treated a little bit poorly because those are some really high expectations. I think that the game is very fun for what it is, and it has an insane amount of potential but that potential will probably never be unlocked. It unfortunately just doesn't feel like the producers are willing to put in the money to make it exceptional. And so because of that, I think it's perfectly rated. It could be more, but it's not. And I think that most people see that. And so that's why it is perfectly rated. And so I'm gonna finish things off with Arknights. Perfectly rated. Similar to Blue Archive, this is a game that has a very rare instance of a gacha game experiencing long-term growth. Like it's divoted a little bit, but it keeps going up over the long term. Sure, I don't play the game anymore, but I still think that it is one of the best on the market. And I think that a lot of other people share the same sentiment as well. Rank all gacha games you are playing from highest to lowest. Arknights, number one, 167 upvotes. Boom, Arknights right there. Boom, Arknights, it's everywhere. The game is good, but I've had my fun. So it was time to move on and that's okay. And so I would say that the initial explosion with the help of Your Star's reputation gave it a pretty big boost. However, the slightly cringe ads probably helped grab a couple of the normies. But to be honest, I think what's carrying it right now is the fact that it's actually just a really, really solid game and its reputation is also very good. And so because of that, I think that it's been perfectly rated from the very, very beginning. And so my guys, that is going to bring us to the end of this video. And I know that there are a lot more other great gacha games out there. So do let me know if you do want to see a part two, but also tell me about what you thought of these games and whether my assessments were kind of right or wrong. Regardless, drop a like, subscribe, comment, whatever. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.